Okay, so setting up the homemade moss trap, you need to find a nice little corner or edge of a garden or a school playground, somewhere where there's a little bit of shrubbery, a few trees overhead, really good. This is an excellent spot. Then you need to make sure that you've got your torch turned on and make sure that you get that into the bottom of the moss trap, complete with those lovely old egg boxes to give the moss somewhere to go to. We've then got the veins that we've made, which we'll just put in over the top. And when it's dark, they will reflect the light together with the funnel. The moss will be attracted to that, go down towards the light and fall down into the uh, bucket itself and seek refuge in those egg boxes. Once you've done that and you've left that on overnight, if it's a little bit windy like this, you might want to get a few rulers just to put down the edge of the veins just to keep this a little bit more solid. Once you've left that running overnight, the excitement begins. You come back in the morning. First thing to do is to make sure that you take the veins out of the funnel and then make sure that you've got some paper or some plastic or something to cover the bucket with. Take the funnel out, making sure that you don't have any moths on the underside of it and then make sure that you get that bucket covered as soon as you can. You can then take the bucket into dining room, school, um, classroom, anywhere that's nice and shaded and that you can sit down, not too bright and not too hot. Once you've done that, you'll then be removing this carefully and looking at the bits of egg box that we've put in. Now, moss tend to like the dark, so they will be going into the little crevices and underneath uh, into this area here. So make sure you handle these with care and that you're really looking to make sure that you see all the moths that are on them. There's all sorts of different species that you might find. There are over 4,000 different species of moth in the UK, but there are some really bright and pretty ones that are around at this time of year. You can find details of moths in moth books or just by using the internet. One that is really common at this time of year is called a heart and dart. And it's called that because it looks like it's got two little hearts on its wings and then it looks like it's got a little chevron in terms of darting off somewhere. So that is really common in June and July all across the UK. One of my favourite moths, by the got a buff ermine here which looks as though it's originally been white but it's got a little bit tired and then you've got a white ermine which is fully white. Again, those are two species that you often find in moth traps at this time of year. And then if you're really lucky, you might get a magpie moth. Looks a little bit like a magpie bird, black and white, but in this case it's got a bit of orange and yellow on it as well. Another really, really good moth to find. And if you're really, really lucky, you might come across some hawk moths. Hawk moths look like hawks, they look like birds of prey, and they've got this really lovely angular wing, and they're really, really big. Poplar hawk moth, really common at this time of year, and if you're really lucky, my favourite, you might get an elephant hawk moth, which is green and pink, quite large, and just amazing. Good luck with your moth trapping.